Hello everybody, my name is Fisk, and welcome to Horus. Now, Horus is a game that I got on uh, Epic. I don't know why I can never remember the name of this stupid play- this... this. <laughs> Words are hard. Um, now, this is a game that I could- uh, Ah! This is a game that I got on Epic Game Store a while back for free. I've played through the opening several times, uh, once before I started YouTube, uh, once when I tried to start YouTube, um, once again after a little while, but I couldn't really bring myself to post that video because I wasn't, it, it seemed kind of bland, but this is Horus. We are going to start a new game. And I I love the look of this game. And I just love its um pseudo Game Boy look. Like this is the kind of graphics that you'd get on like a Game Boy Advance, which I've actually got a looking back video coming up which might mean I'm going to be doing uh, a couple of videos on the Game Boy. The first one, Model 1. Dial-up tones, haven't heard that since I was about six. Like, actual legitimate dial-up tones. Can I help you, ma'am? Dog. Hey, sit. Hey, dog. Hey. Hey, over here. Over here. Oh. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Hi. No, don't lick my face. Yeah, I'll, I'll just let you watch all this while, while I play with my dog. Whoop. Oh. Would you like to say hi, doggo? No, don't like me. Hey. Well, I hope she didn't break my laptop, because she stepped right on it. Woof. Woof. Okay, I'll be right back, guys. Looks like I'm losing some frames. And it also looks like I'm slightly out of focus. I don't know if that helped or not. Alright, back to the game. Oh, that's right. I'm not a huge fan of this walk cycle. Thankful. So, I was born. The first people I remember seeing were the old man, the old lady, and their daughter, Heather. After they'd said hello, the old man powered me down so he could install some software. I could tell they were nice people. The old man didn't give me a silly voice or stupid personality. And the old lady didn't dress me like a clown. Although for some reason, Heather really didn't like me. Once I'd had time to get used to walking, the old man asked me to dash from one end of the room to the other. So I may or may not um, just skip through a lot of this tutorial. But also... Um, Frickin' Naruto run. Um, Next, the old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms. He said he wanted me to jump up them. But I must admit, I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them that I decided it might be okay. Uh, I was saying when this started, you know, I, I wasn't a fan of that walk cycle. 
I was about to say, thankfully, it doesn't stick around. But anyway, um, I may clip out a bunch of this the old tutorial man stuff. Then rearranged the platforms. He told me to try to reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. Heather said, the floor's made of lava. But when I smiled at her, she just frowned and looked away. The old lady arranged some pillows and blankets. She said it was in case I fell, but I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. I do like this. Um, you know, uh, did, oh, wrong button. Uh, Detroit become human, where they treated the androids like, well, property because they were. Um, but in this, they're kind of treating him like his own person. When I reached, and the I other really side, like that. The old man just smiled and said, "That'll do, for now." It be begin be bold and adventurous to be wise, and venture to be wise. Jeez, I can read. I swear. A couple of days after those first lessons, the family had a big meal, and I was introduced to everyone else. The professor was the old man's brother. He was very quiet, and always seemed to just kind of stare at me. He had lived with the old man for five years. The house was so huge they barely saw each other. He preferred instead to stay in his room, leaving everything up to his butler, Mr. Deck. As he insisted everyone call him, although the professor always called him Anton. For a while, he called me a yellow bird, but the old man made him stop, as he thought it sounded racist. Mr. Silton was the old man's driver. Before he worked here he'd gotten in with some bad people and was the driver in a post office robbery, although it all went wrong for some reason. Mr. Silton showed me a video of his band. I'm sure some people must like it, but I just found it terrifying. Then there was Alice. She was the cook. She was a nice old lady. When she was younger she had been a TV chef. Then, years later she had a small part in Coronation Street. Mr. Silton said, before she worked for the old man, Alice was quite a hoarder. She kept old newspapers and bicycles. And something about a poo in a shoebox. Poo in a shoebox? The next morning, the old man gathered everyone together to show them what I was capable of. What else does he do? asked Mr. Silton. The old man smiled. He can help around the house. Could he help me with my newspaper collecting? asked Alice. I'm not sure that's a good idea, said the old lady, but he can do all sorts of jobs. Yeah, said Mr. Silton, shove a stick up his and he can do Dex job. Now, now, <laughs> said the old man, we have company, pointing to some important looking people. Two large men, both called Gary, set up what the old man referred to as lasers. He said again, I should try to get from one end of the room to the other, but I shouldn't be worried, as I had a special chip which meant no matter how damaged I was, I couldn't die. He said it was like infinite lies in a video game. But when he realized I didn't understand, he said he would explain another time. Yeah. <sighs> freaking close. Everybody clapped, except the important looking men. Not exactly a cold calculated killer, is it? Said the man in black. The man in grey laughed. What kind of artificial intelligence was that? He asked. Move right, unless there's something in the okay. way. Okay, okay, said the old man. He turned to me and whispered, they're going to make it quite a bit tougher. 
but I'm sure you'll be fine. I always get the run and the jump buttons mixed up. then rearranged the room one last time. The old man smiled. Now, now, there's no need to look so glum, he said. I'm still happy with everything you've done today. So this time, I was determined to do him proud. See what I mean? Like, he just treats him like he's his own person. And I'm, I really do like that. Because, you know, say what you want about uh, about, you know, people owning androids and- oh. People owning androids and things like that, how it, like, dehumanizes people, like in Detroit. Um, become human. I should probably make that re I should probably make that clear. Um. It's hard not to sympathize. Uh, for- <laughs> For a person, um, you would need, come on, you would need a couple of generations to, um, make that change in people. The whole, I don't like you because you're a robot. Now granted, there will be people who, you know, will always be opposed to, you know, having androids around stealing jobs or whatever the excuse is. Uh, but you can't get around the fact that human nature responds to anything that has a, a human face to it. So... The old man's friends actually seemed quite happy when I made it through. We might have a winner after all, said the man in black. It's no kill bot 3000, but you can almost see the fire in its eyes. A couple of days later, the old lady said she had a surprise for me. My own room. She also wanted to play me some music. I wasn't sure after what Mr. Silton had shown me. As if music wasn't amazing enough, the old lady then bought me a television set. I couldn't believe what I saw. I watched everything I could. Comedy, drama, horror, sci-fi. Anything anyone wanted to watch I would happily watch with them. Then one day, the old man set up a small box. He plugged some cables into the television and said, this is what I meant when I said video games. <laughs> That's great. I played games at every chance I could. I took on everyone. I was unstoppable. I had enjoyed music, film, and television. But to me, video games really were the highest art form. Is that a PlayStation? <laughs> I mean, obviously not, but that, that looked like the PlayStation 2. Table tennis for two. Which is really just Pong. <sighs> Thank you. Jeez. Heather's birthday was a couple of months later. Her mum and dad had bought her a camera. And arranged a day up by the sea, so that Heather could take some photos. Although I really don't think she wanted any pictures of me. When the old man asked the professor if he wanted to go, he frowned and said, 
I can't believe you want to spend time with that thing, it could destroy the world. I wasn't sure what he meant, but the old man just smiled and said, that's what you said about the Game Boy. And <laughs> on, how about you? I don't think so, said Mr. Deck. The last time I got in that car, Barry crashed us into a branch of Woolworths. I never would have gone into Woolworths of my own accord. The old man explained that the car was old and the brakes had failed, but Mr. Deck was having none of it. So Mr. Silton drove, and Alice came along for the fresh air. This is really cool. I like the... I enjoyed being outside. Although, the old lady kept telling me to be careful of the rickety old walkways. It felt like she was telling me off, but I think she was just concerned. I do like the mix of time periods, though. The car, the robot, the games. As the old man and I stood on the clifftops, I could see something in the distance. I wasn't sure what it was, so I asked the old man. He said it was a battleship that had sunk in the 1940s. But he looked so sad when he spoke about war. I didn't see what happened, but the metal platform Heather was climbing on had collapsed. She was safe, even if the rocks she was on looked very dangerous. The tide was rising, and we didn't know how long the Coast Guard was going to be, so I offered to climb down and get her. The old man agreed, but said I should be careful, as Heather doesn't have infinite lives, like I do. Whoa. Heather was unconscious, and her leg was broken, so I picked her up as gently as I could. I decided it would be best if I didn't run the rest of the way. Ugh. Just about hit that one. Nope. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Hey, there we go. An ambulance had arrived by the time I had made it back to the cliff top. The medics made sure Heather was okay, and then took her off to hospital. A few days later, we all went to see how she was doing. She was fine, but would have to wear the cast for a couple of months. This is a really interesting uh, story so far. Once Heather got to know me, we became good friends. We enjoyed the same films and TV. She was also annoyingly good at some of my favorite games. After a while, she became very interested in how I worked. Soon she knew as much about me as the old man did, if not more. We spent the next couple of months visiting other countries, as when it came to teaching me things, the old man always liked to pick interesting locations. He had explained the basics of mathematics to me at the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Taught me history in the dead of night, surrounded by mysterious giant stones. And even showed me science in action high up in a hot air balloon. 
This is why I <laughs> was surprised when the old man took me to a restaurant. It was nice, but it seemed very somber compared to the previous 42. grand locations. He said he just wanted to chat, and this was nice and quiet. Plus it was his favorite place to eat. We talked about life, the universe, Douglas Adams, Douglas Adams. everything really. When I asked him, why were we here? Why did we exist? He just smiled and said, life is like a game, just don't expect to be finished anytime soon. When I looked puzzled, he said, well, everyone should have a purpose. So I asked him, what's my purpose? He thought for a bit, then said, so you want to be a real boy? Which just confused me even more. Eventually the old man said, for now, I want you to help clean things around the house. I must have looked unimpressed. As he then said, Okay. I want you to clean one million things. It didn't sound like the meaning of life. But I suppose you've got to start somewhere. A man can't have everything. Where would he put it? Uh, Terence Allen Milligan, I think? I can't read the it from here. The next day, the old man said he wanted to install some more software, so he powered me down. When I came to, he said Mr. Silton had a joke for me, and that I should pull his finger. I don't think I got the joke. So the old man powered me down again. This time when I pulled Mr. Silton's finger, I got the joke. But it wasn't very funny. The old man then explained that he had installed a special chip which allowed me to clean away anything that was broken. He said it also tells me how many things are nearby, and how many smaller things are in a bigger thing. It all sounded very complicated, but he said all I really had to do was pause, and it would bring up all the information I needed. He then said he wanted me to find and clean all of the items in the room. He told me there would be some chains to climb, but that would be nice and easy, as I just had to press up. He then finished by saying, when I had collected all the items, I should come back here. I... I really enjoy games like this, but a lot of the time, they do not find good ways of telling you how to play the game, so they'll legitimately just straight up have characters say, press X to jump. And it kinda, to me it seems lazy. You know, I, I know how, I know from other video games, you know, I, I have experience from other video games. Like, if you say, tell me to, if you, the. If you say clean things in a video game, I'm going to assume that the action button that you use for, you know, doing other things, uh, picks up stuff. But... These indie platformers seem to think that just because, you know, they have some odd mechanic that, you know, that, you know, say your average everyday first person shooter doesn't have, they, they feel like they need to explicitly say, hey, whoa, uh, they feel like they need to explicitly say, hey, do this to do this thing. Ah, oh, dang it. And it just kind of seems lazy. Like, I would almost prefer them not say anything. And just let me figure it out on my own. Because at least then, I'm not being told something I already know. And I understand that some people don't know these things. Some people don't play video games. But just because you don't play video games doesn't mean, you know, you're not going to understand 
hey, there's a way to get up, you know, up there. Well, there's a thing hanging down. How do I get up it? You know, somebody who's playing a video the game man then asked the old lady is going to figure it out. I to follow him outside. I was happy too, as it was a lovely hot day. The old man said he was worried that Alice had been hoarding again. She had filled up a small barn with old bicycles and newspapers. Heather said, this would be a perfect chance to properly test my new powers. The old man thought for a second, then said, using the Steptoe chip, I should find and clean, at least 300 things. When we explained to Alice what we wanted to do, she seemed scared. But after the old lady kindly explained that, well, the barn was starting to smell. She said it would be okay. One last thing, said the old man. If you want to use a door, just push up. See, again, like... When I was about to enter the old barn. Mr. Silton said he had seen some mushrooms I understand inside. if you want they to tell to someone... That I found, yeah, and he's just asking me to find mushrooms so that, that he can eat sure them. Why. Um, I understand, like... Having, no, oh, that's copyrighted music. Uh, I understand having a tutorial, and I understand, you know, telling the player how to do things. But you can also, um, just have a little uh, indicator above every single door with just a little up arrow key. It sounds like you know hand-holding. It sounds like, hey, you're not smart enough to remember this kind of a thing. But honestly, I've seen a lot of games do that, and you just, you learn to not see it. I, it just kind of makes me feel like, hey, you're never going to figure this out. Our game is so quirky. You... I, I have to tell you how to do this. Ah! Um... But to me, it kind of breaks the story. It kind of... It, it is third wall breaking for no purpose. Okay. Ah! What the heck? Alright, so I cleaned up everything. The old man was very happy with everything that I had cleaned. But I think Mr. Silton was even more happy with his mushrooms. You need help. Oh, hey, look, it's the opening screen. It wasn't the days getting shorter, or the evenings getting colder. It was the falling leaves that really made me feel sad. As we watched the trees blowing in the breeze, the old lady said, The leaves must fall before the blossom comes. She had already explained the seasons to me, so for once, I actually understood. But it didn't make me feel any better. The old lady obviously heard enough of my moping, and said, Right, next week we're going to have a party. For some reason she insisted that we were all going to wear costumes. Heather was very excited and said, I've got some perfect ideas. It was terrifying. Everyone was dressed like someone else. I think I was meant to be some kind of pumpkin, as everyone kept shouting, It's the Great Pumpkin. Still, at least Mr. Silton was having fun telling everyone his joke. And I suppose Heather's costume was quite flattering. After what seemed like forever, everybody left, and things got back to normal. Heather was allowed to watch a scary film before she went to bed, but I had to help Alice and Mr. Deck clean up. To 
get you, Barbara. I wasn't happy about this. But the old man said if I was quick, then I could watch the end of the film with them. I think that was... Uh, Alice was vacuuming, and Mr. Deck was taking down the decorations. Night of the Dead or something like so that? So I thought I should clean up the plates and glasses. It's like considered the first uh, actual zombie movie. I remember watching it. The ear splitting Ooh. sound was the fire alarm. As usual, Mr. Deck blames Mr. Silton, saying he was probably smoking one of his jazz cigarettes. Jazz cigarettes? But then the professor appeared. He said that there was something burning in the kitchen. Alice looked confused, saying that she hadn't cooked anything since the morning. We were all surprised when Mr. Deck opened the oven. Inside was a large black cloak and a slightly burnt pair of men's underwear. Suddenly the old lady burst in. She looked terrified. She kept shouting, there's someone on the roof. When we went outside, it slowly became obvious that it was Mr. Silton. He was completely naked and playing his guitar. He shouted down, when I finish this song, I'm going to fly. The old lady said, oh my god, I know this one, there's only about 30 seconds left. The old man then quickly turned to me and said, you know what to do. Ah, uh, uh. Ah. Uh. I guess he had like some bad mushrooms or something? I mean, that makes sense. Up. Uh, Up. Uh. Nope. I think I'm gonna have to do this one over. Unless there's like a... Uh. By the time oh. I had made it up to the roof, Mr. Silton was beside the edge. I tried to calm him down. But he was acting even more bizarre than usual. Yeah, bad mushrooms. <laughs> Robot saves local idiot. Android After and hero. An hour or so. Mr. Silton was fine. He said he had eaten some bad magic mushrooms. Part of me wondered why he hadn't doubled in size. Still, he was soon laughing and joking with the paramedics. One of them said he looked like the world's worst clown. I don't think Mr. Silton liked that. So he told his own joke. But that just made the other paramedic call him Marshmell Marso. <laughs> I don't think he liked that either, but at least he was still in one piece. <sighs> A month or so later, Heather and I were playing huh? video games, when the old man said he wanted me to come outside. He said it had been a year since I had arrived, so he had a present for me. He placed the teddy here. bear high up on a wooden platform. He then told me I should try to pick it up. Uh... Okay, I can't go any farther that way. Try as I might, I couldn't reach the okay, teddy bear. so I wasn't supposed to. However, I still don't understand what happened next. No.
I will say that that effect right there, I've seen it a couple of times and it's garbage. The blurring. This is kind of odd. So what, they had to shock his system to get him to shut down? Just in a shutdown loop, something. Or maybe a reboot loop. Okay, so apparently a lot of time is passing, but I am going to leave this here. Um, I have no idea what I'm... I have no idea what's going on. I feel like I'm on some bad mushrooms. Was that the Amiga thing? Well, these are all video games. Well, I mean, th this bit is. Or, or tech demos, really. Because couldn't call them video games back then. <laughs> uh, not really. Um. Was I dead? Was this heaven? It sort of looked like the basement bathroom. Yeah, it's probably the basement bathroom then. Um, Alright, well, I'm going to leave this here. Uh, this is actually a really interesting game. I am going to come back to this. I haven't actually gotten this far before. Uh, I got to the uh, uh, part with Mr. Stilton just about falling off the roof. It's been a while since I've played a new game that I've actually been interested in. So that'll be it for now. I've been Fisk, this has been Horus, and I'll see you guys next time.